Who the heck says that print marketing is dead? I'm going to share with you five different reasons why it's alive and doing well, thank you very much, and why you need to be implementing print in your real estate marketing. Hey there, it's Michael Creasy here, the executive editor with Agent Inner Circle from agentinnercircle.com. And in this week's episode, well, you guessed it, it's all about print marketing. And by print marketing, I'm referring to direct mail using mail, postcards, or newsletters. And in the comment section below this video, please share with us if you're using any of those in your real estate marketing and what the results have been. And also stay tuned to the very end because I have a link for a special sample of a newsletter that you can be using in your marketing that works gangbusters. So let's get into this week's episode. I'm talking about print being dead, and that was the rumor. Well, 20 years ago, there was a migration from print, meaning newspapers, to online mediums, blogs, Huffington Post, those various related uh, sites. The millennials were leading that charge. Now what's happened is that same group is coming back to print. And what I mean coming back, what's happened is they see stuff online, but now we're living in an age of alternate truths and fake news. So although they're seeing it online, they're coming back to newspapers and periodicals for the credibility and to validate what they're actually seeing online. The other point is guys like me, the professionals, as, you know, 50-somethings that still remember who the Beatles are, we've always had an affinity to print. There's something about the tactile feel of being able to hold it, smell it, almost taste it. That's the, the magic of print for our demographic. So two things there. But what's happening now is the U.S. Post Office, United Kingdom Post Office, and Canada Post, all three of them did separate studies. And they concluded more or less the same thing. You ready for this? People love mail. Not junk mail. They love receiving mail that has their name on it. And in this case, here's an oversized card and it has a nice big stamp. There's nothing institutional about this. So when I see it, I'm thinking, oh, birthday card, or somebody took the time to send me something special. Now, in one of the studies that the US Post Office did, they actually used MRIs. And when they did wave scans of the brain, they actually saw the brain spiked when it was holding, when a person was holding mail. There was an emotional attachment to receiving mail, direct mail. Now, when I open this up in particular, this is a newsletter. And this is the one that we publish called Service for Life. And this is not institutional by any means. And that's why it works so well. When I open up this newsletter, it looks like I made it. There's nothing institutional. Institutional by default, we look at it and we throw it away. But something like this looks like I took the time to put it together for you. And even the whole way it's put together, for example, it's all captivating headlines, teasers. For example, is opening a store credit card worth it? Best substitutes for uh, someone who you know has food sensitivities. Four surprising cleaning supplies you already know. So I think you get the idea here. The topics are tantalizing. They're the kind of things that people read, almost like the National Enquirer or Reader's Digest. But also within this newsletter are calls to action to get people to actually pick up the phone and contact you to refer business. That's the power of this kind of newsletter that flies under the radar. But the other thing too, even before you send something like this out, you would only use it with people that you know, people that already know, like, and trust you, because then it becomes welcomed into their household. So here's the thing. You would call up somebody and say, hey, Bob, I, I'm putting together this monthly newsletter. I think you'd be interested. Can I mail you a copy? Of course they're going to say yes. Bob gets it. He's expecting it. Sees his name on the envelope. Opens it. Voila, there's the newsletter. Starts reading it. Is compelled by the content. You know what happens next? Bob actually wants to refer this to his sister, to his mother, to people that they know. And what happens next is they start calling you, asking to put loved ones onto your mailing list. You're growing your database by other people recommending your newsletter. So the key to this, let's review this quickly one more time. One, you want to make sure it comes in an envelope, nothing institutional looking, handwritten font, big stamp. Two, the newsletter itself has to be something that looks like you did it with compelling stories and teasers that pull people, what we call direct uh, response uh, marketing, that pulls them in and makes them want to refer business to you. And three, there has to be mechanisms in place here that A, it's easy for people to refer business, but also easy for them to refer this newsletter to their friends and family. So I mentioned that 
that there would be a link for you to download, by all means, there's a sample of our Service for Life newsletter. Download it and take a look at it. So once again, Michael Creasy here, the executive editor with Agent Inner Circle from agentinnercircle.com. Hope you found this video helpful. And by all means, check out Service for Life. We know a thing or two about newsletters. We've been putting them out for 20 years now. I think you'll be impressed.